everybody. Welcome to the Stock Car Spectacle. I'm Ian Jordson. I'm Mike Gamble. I'm Nick Kinsel. And I'm Todd Bunn. And today we're going to be previewing the Charlotte week of racing. We're going to be starting off with the Coca-Cola 600. And then on Monday, we're going to be doing the Xfinity series with the Alsco 300. And then Tuesday, we'll be with the truck series for the North Carolina Education Lottery 200. Wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then Wednesday, we're going to have another cup race, which is going to be the Alsco Uniforms 500. So we got a lot of racing coming up, boys. And I'm excited. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I know we're not going to have any uh, any fans at the track, obviously, but 600 week, we will say. We kind of got to drop the term weekend, I guess, at this point. Yeah. But uh, 600 week is always, always one of the best things in NASCAR. And everything we're going to have jam-packed in a row here, and it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Charlotte, I think, always produces pretty good races, too. And the only yeah. thing we're going to miss, our brothers over at IndyCar are not going to be hosting the Indy 500 on that day. So it's going to be a uh, yeah. Memorial Day weekend for sure. And more for Connor and I, no Formula One either, so that's going to suck. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's, it's No sucks. Monaco. That's for sure. Yeah, I know, man. It, and I saw the uh, saw the news, you know, Formula, or excuse me, IndyCar is not going to Richmond this year either. So yeah, yeah that sucks as well. But I'm um, very happy. We're, we're still going to have a lot of racing on Slate and Charlotte this week. Yeah, that's for sure. So, boys, we start off with the Coca-Cola 600 on Sunday. Last year's winner was Martin Truex Jr. Who do you guys have to win on Sunday? Let's start off with Connor. Um, You know, I, I've kind of battled back and forth with this. And, you know, I, again, I think the Coke 600 is where the veterans come to play. Um, more specifically, I said last week on the show that, uh, you know, Darlington, Charlotte have kind of been – you know, Toyota track recently where they've kind of had their handprints all over it. Um, I kind of see that going the same this, this year as well. Um, for the 600, I will go with, um, I will go with Denny Hamlin for the 600. I think he's carrying a lot of momentum this year. Um, that team is just very hard to beat. They seem solid. Um, so I'll rock with Denny Hamlin for the 600. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to mirror a little bit of your sentiment there because I think you're spot on again, Connor. I think, again, as long as we're on this little track where we show up to a racetrack, no practice, they are, they are going to qualify, so we'll get one lap on their tires to kind of see what they have for this race. But still, it was very minimal to see what you can and can't do with your car. Um, but as long as that's the conditions in which we're working in, that first race on Sunday, I think you are going to see the veterans do better over the grand st- uh, stretch of those races and then sunday we'll see what happens from there um martin truex jr is a guy that's been very fast here uh, i think we saw him pretty fast again on wednesday here I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him get it done again you know he's been knocking on the door here a couple times so i'm gonna go ahead and pick martin truex jr to get it done at the 600 again all right okay. and yeah, that pains me to say yeah this one's gonna pain me to say because i gotta agree with you guys this is this has just really been a Gibbs track the past few years. So you took Denny, you took Martin. I got to take the 18 of Kyle Busch here. He won, he's won this race before. And I just like you guys have been saying, Toyota, yeah, right? Nick picking, a, Nick picking a Toyota, especially with that being Kyle Busch. But he, the man's too good at these mile and a half race tracks. So I think this is going to be another Gibbs dominated race. Would not be surprised to see Kyle win the 600 for, for a second time. I don't think we would have been able to get you to pick that with a gun to your head. That, oh my God. <laughs> Arm shells tonight. <laughs> All right. So, for my pick for the Coca Cola 600, I got to go with the man, Brad Kislowski. The man, he's, he, this is going to be the only race with Miller Lite. So, I'd love to see that car in victory lane. Give it one, last one last time. One last time. Like that. Yep. Uh, I got to go with Brad Kowalski. He is an ace on the mile and a half. Now let's go into Monday for the Xfinity race. Uh, guys, let's just do it like how we did last week. Kyle Busch or the field. Because the field proved today that they can beat Kyle Busch. Well, the field the field has been awful, uh, awfully lucky this year. On the, and beating the 18, or the, excuse me, the 54 in the Xfinity series. Oh, man, you know, it's it's going to be very hard. I've. Both both races this year, I've I've picked Kyle Busch over the field. Um, 
So, you know, I'm going to go a little bit against that considering Kyle Busch is over this year in Xfinity strictly because he's over two. I'm going to take the field this weekend, uh, or I guess this coming up week at Charlotte. And uh, for the winner, let me get uh, – give, uh, give me old Noah Gregson as the winner. All right. Ooh, okay. Good answer, good answer. Um, listen, I think this past week at Darlington is a good track, especially for Kyle Busch, but I don't think it's a track you're like, oh, man, that's a great track for Kyle Busch, really. I don't think that stands out. I mean, he's good everywhere, let's be real. But I don't think that's a track that stands out. You're like, oh, man, yeah, he's he's going to dominate here. Um, I think Charlotte is one of those tracks. You go back and you look up who's who's accrued the most points there the last four or five races. He's a name that's at the top. He's very good here. Um, then you put him against these Xfinity drivers, which, again, Chase, Chase Briscoe really gave him a run for his money today as we're filming this, not too uh, long before we're filming this. I just think it's too tough to bet against Kyle Busch in a track like this on a mile and a half. So I'm going to take the 54. Yeah, and happy to say it again. But the only way Kyle Busch loses on uh, Monday is if he does it himself like he did today. He's just too good. So it's going to take him getting wrecked or him messing up to lose this race. I think Kyle Busch gets a little redemption and gets a checkered flag. All right. Um. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the field. Uh, Kyle Busch is 0-2 right now. So uh, for my driver, I'm going to have to go with uh, Mr. Ross Chastain is going to take it to victory lane on Monday. Solid pick. Solid. Yes. All right, so let's dig into the truck series. Guys, same question, basically. Kyle Busch in the field. Um, truck series-wise, huh? Kyle, Kyle Busch. Do what? <laughs> It's going to be the bounty race, too. It's yeah. be the bounty race with all these cup guys entering. So you might want to throw cup guys versus the field in this one for that truck they race. they say who's entered for it? Uh, Chase, Chase Elliott, Elliott, Elliott for Elliott. sure. Uh, okay. Wait, he's not – are they not doing Atlanta? Well, I mean, well, this is the first – We're not really sure when we're running Atlanta. Atlanta. Well, yeah, we are, but – Yeah. yeah what are you saying? We're but, running Atlanta, but you still have all these cup guys that are entered in the field, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Chase for sure. We do know that one. Yeah. Um, well, for truck series, I'll take Kyle Busch in second gear all the way around the track. Um, hard to beat in truck. He's he's somewhat beatable in, in Xfinity. He's damn hard to beat in truck. So I'll take I'll take him in the truck series. All right. I'm actually in this case gonna take the field. Um, reason being, if you look back at past performance here. Three of the four Thor Sport drivers being Crafton, Souter, and Ben Rhodes have been bad fast here. Have a lot of top fives and some wins to go along with it here. Um, I'd like to think they've had the most time to work on their trucks as, uh, you know, Kyle Busch has kind of had to worry about everything as opposed to some of these cup drivers. So I think they're going to have a little bit of an advantage there. Um, although I think his versatility does come back and kind of even that out. But I am going to be a little bit of a homer like I can be when it comes to the truck series. I'm going to go with uh, the field, and I'm going to take the 99 of Ben Rhodes. All right. Okay. Nice. Oh, Ben's going to get it done finally. <laughs> I'm going to go against the field. I'm going to go with the field here. Um, I would like to see a truck regular get this one done, and there's only one guy that comes to mind when I think that, and that is, that is Brett Moffitt. I think Brett Moffitt's got the best chance of going out there and hanging with those boys, with those cup guys who are entered into this race. So I I, I think Brett Moffitt's going to get it done. Not bad, not bad. Especially uh, coming back after uh, breaking both of his legs in the, what was it, skiing accident? Dirt bike, I think. Yeah, dirt bike? Dirt okay. Bike. Yeah. That's he crazy. was playing around thinking he was Eli Tomac or Kenny Roxon, and look what happened. Yeah, right? Right. <laughs> It's kind of it's kind of crazy how he's able to break both legs and not miss a single race and be able to yeah, return. Yeah, right. a little, the most a little thing bit thankful happen. for the pandemic, don't you think? Yep. It, yeah. It, right. It, good. Yeah. <laughs> and then Wednesday we have the Cup Series is back at Charlotte for the Elsco Uniforms 500. Guys, who do you have to win the race on Wednesday? Um, you know, uh, like I said, it's. Gibbs kind of has their fingers all over the Charlotte. It's very hard for me not to take Gibbs, not just because I'm biased towards them, but just, you know, you look at the past few races there, and they've kind of seemed the favorite. Um, but that being said, I'm not going to take a Gibbs car for Wednesday. I'm actually going to take a Ford 
I've been throwing up whether it's going to be Joey Logano or Kevin Harvick. It's really hard to pick Kevin Harvick, hard to pick against Kevin Harvick right now. So I will pick, uh, I'll pick Kevin Harvick for Wednesday. All right. All right. So if you look at the performance of the, of these, uh, the past performance of these drivers at Charlotte, again, like we've said, it's been a lot of Toyota drivers that stand out, but there's one Chevy driver that stands out and is amongst the top three in the last two, three, four races there. Um, he's going to be fiery considering what's happened here. I'm going to take Chase Elliott in the nine to get it done on Wednesday. All right. <laughs> Nick, who you got? This one could really go up in the air because it's just like we don't know what we're really going to have yet. They're going to have those notes from Sunday, but that, that race is being run under the lights. This, uh, this afternoon race I don't think is. So it's a totally different racetrack. So when I look at it, I think of a guy who needs a little bit of redemption from Darlington. So he's another Chevrolet driver. He's teeth Chase Elliott. I got to go with the 48 of Jimmy Johnson to get this one done. Jimmy ha- has tamed Charlotte in the past. He had a really rough go of it at Darlington where he kind of let himself go there. But Cliff Daniels said, don't let this get you down. We have really fast race cars again. So I, I look at Jimmy Johnson as a threat to go win on Wednesday. All right. So hold on. Let's take a second and just reflect on the fact that in one show, Nick has picked both Kyle Busch and Jimmy Johnson. Yeah. Not proud this, of it. But yeah. Where are, are somebody, you okay, somebody, dude? Yeah. We got to do a wellness check on Nick, I think. <laughs> that's like that's like the equivalent of, like, you see that stuff on Twitter. Like, if I were going to say something so you knew I was really in trouble, what would it be? Yeah, right. Just, I, just, I was honestly just, he said he's going to take the field in the truck series. I was honestly just waiting on him to say little old Miss Natalie Decker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we'd really know what's going on. Come on, man. I have a little bit of brain cells left up there. <laughs> I'd had to dri- drive over to Lombard myself and check on if you would have said that one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh All right. God. So my, my, my pick for Wednesday. I got to go with uh, previous winner of Charlotte. I got to go with Kurt Busch. He's always fast to Charlotte. I think we're going to see that uh, old Monster Energy Chevy Camaro in victory lane on Wednesday. Blown away that you didn't pick Harvick for any of those races. So, wow. All right. You know, I can't pick my guy every week. It's not going to work out. You can when it makes sense, man. I'm right about Sunday. I can't (laughs) do that all the time. Oh, okay. I can't be right all the time, guys. I gotta let you guys be right sometimes. Come on, guys. <laughs> oh my God! Listen to this, boys. <laughs> but I, I, it's gonna be a good week of racing at Charlotte. That's for sure, boys. Yeah, uh, we, we already had an exciting week at Darlington with no practice, no qualifying. Just get in the car and go. Yeah, pretty much. I'm definitely looking forward <laughs> to it. Looking forward to see you guys. Um, hopefully rebound and just have better weeks, um, you know, such as like Kyle and and just like Blaney and guys like that who just kind of like stumbled out the gate these last two races. So um, Charlotte's a very mutual ground for a lot of drivers. Um, a lot of guys are good there. Um, I almost wanted to pick William Byron for one of the races because he's he's been pretty solid at Charlotte. It's a home track for him. And the thing about Charlotte is Charlotte is such, you know, a good track for many of these drivers that it's really hard to pinpoint one because it seems like, you know, every year, at least one race at Charlotte, you know, we kind of not get a surprise winner, but we kind of get reminded like, oh, that guy's good here. So um, it, it, That's definitely, point. Right. it definitely should be interesting. I think you have a lot more favorites um, to pick from in the pool this week than you would oppose as the other as to other weeks. So mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, look forward to all the uh, nice shenanigans and surprises that we'll see this coming up uh, week, I guess, at uh, Charlotte. Yeah. Two real kind of quick pointers that I'm really looking forward to when it comes to the weekend is, number one, we are going to get a qualifying session on Sunday. Um, So we are going to have, I know it's not going to be our usual triple header of Monaco, Indy into uh, the 600, but at the same time, we are going to have a little bit of a all day event because we're going to have qualifying in the afternoon and then going racing in the evening time. So that'll be pretty cool to see. At least they'll get some kind of opportunity to see what kind of cars they have. So that's at least a start. Um, And I'm really intrigued to see once again, going from this Sunday race to Wednesday again, how does that work for these teams again? 
I think this is another kind of track where, you know, like like Connor said, there's a lot of guys who are actually really good here. So a couple little adjustments, a couple of notes they could take from Sunday. I think Wednesday is going to be one hell of a race. Oh, absolutely. The shorter race, too. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Yeah. With the 500 race, so that, 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 that really worked out for them yesterday. So I'm excited to see that relay over into Wednesday's race. Yep, it will definitely be a crazy transition for sure. I wonder if they're going to be using their same car since it's going to be a 600-mile race. I don't think I'd so. have to think like, not, yeah. I, 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 you know, that 600-milers put such a strain on those cars and the motor and stuff, and, you know, it, it'd be very, very hard to turn around a 600 car for, you know, another race at Charlotte. But, uh, you know, we'll we'll see. You never know. I didn't, I didn't think the winner this past week would turn around and use his car, and he did, and he walked away with the third place finish out of it so you know who knows we never know exactly all right boys you got anything else to add before we go into charlotte um uh, just you know appreciate you guys having me on the show again it's always fun to be on here and uh talk with you guys as my computer is about to die but um i just want to say thank you again looking forward to talk to you guys again next week after we do this whole three race shenanigan all over again <laughs> absolutely yeah, brother we appreciate you being on I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. All right, guys. Uh, make sure to follow us on all podcast platforms. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Follow for the lead on Twitter and Instagram as well. Appreciate follow it. Follow friend at Kodo's Mojo. He's got a great sports podcast. So that'll do it for the Stock Car Spectacle Race Preview. I'm Ian Jortson. I'm Mike Campbell. I'm Nick Kinsel. <laughs> <laughs> right there, and I'm Connor Bunn. And thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> we'll see you next time.